I forgot how incredibly goofy I am as a human being. So, yeah. <laughs> Bear with me. So, anyway. Um, this video, the whole purpose of the video is to talk about inequalities. And I'm going to teach you or reinforce ways on how you can make teaching inequalities fun. So, yay! Inequalities! <laughs> inequalities. Okay. So, let's get to it. So, let's talk about the um, activity that I do for to help with associating the keywords with the inequality symbol. Like, if I have some students right now watching this video, they're gonna be like, oh my God, I remember this, okay? So that's like, if you are teach a lesson and your kids years later can be like, oh snap, I do remember that, then that means that was probably a pretty good lesson. It's called, Spin that wheel! <laughs> so what you do is you go to Google and you say, um, spin the wheel or, yeah, basically like a spinning wheel random generator or something like that. And I'll put that link or whatever in here. And thank God for the person who made this. Because basically what you do is you put different um, phrases so you can use variables so you can say S because S is going to stand for Starburst because you are using Starburst for this lesson okay if you don't really want to use Starburst use something that's like individually packed that you can buy with your own money and pass out that you're okay with buying paying for so what you do is to prep for this you put the different um, phrases to go on the wheel and make sure you're using keywords that you know a lot of people and students have trouble with. So like, is at least, is one that like blows people's minds. Like it's still, there's adults to this day who still struggle with that. So make sure you have phrases that have that in there, have that a lot on the wheel. Definitely phrases like, is no more than. Um, have phrases that are like, no greater than, no less than. Um, uh, what's another one? Oh, at most, is at most, oh, is at most and is at least, definitely have that on the wheel multiple times, okay? Because you need to make sure you drive home that point because that is one of the most common things that kids and even adults have trouble just knowing what sign goes with those keywords, okay? So this is what you're gonna put in the generator and put in the website with the spin the wheel. Then what you're going to do, is make sure you beforehand when you get there you bought enough starburst now i would say let's say you have um let's say you have 25 kids in your class all right make sure you bought at least an average of three to four starburst per kid each kid won't get three or four starburst but i just had this is how my brain thought when i was in the store i'm like all right i just don't want to not have enough so just, you know, so if I have 25 kids, I try to get at least three. So make sure you buy at least 75 individual Starburst, okay? So you get the big pack, get the little long pack, you go to the convenience store on your way to work, you know, whatever is affordable for your pockets. So you have your Starburst, you have the spin the wheel thing projected on your screen. Hopefully you have a classroom projector and it could attach to your computer because that will make this activity way more fun if everyone can see the wheel. So, okay, I'm sorry, I really love this activity, I'm so excited. I've calmed down my excitement for math, okay? But I'm not gonna lie to you, I love math so much, I'm gonna get excited again. <laughs> so, what um, you're going to do is, I love this activity because every single student in your class will be able to participate. Every single student in your class will have an opportunity to get some Starburst. So, how it works is you're just gonna go around the classroom and start with, you know, go around, start front, whatever you do. And you're going to tell the class, all right, everyone, what y'all are going to do is I'm gonna say, one, two, three, and then you're going to say, spin that wheel. So after you count the one, two, three, there's gonna be kids who say spin that wheel. And by the end of the lesson, you're gonna have just about everybody in the class doing it. Even the cool kid, too, too cool to say it. Cause at the end of the day, everyone wants to be part of the group. 
So <laughs> you're going to do that with each student. So you start off with one student, spin that wheel. Everyone's watching, anticipating to see where it stops. So let's say it stops as S is at least three. Okay? So you're, you're, make sure each kid has like an index card, maybe a piece of paper or a whiteboard with dry erase marker if you all got it like that at your school. And say, every kid, I will, you want every kid to write down the inequality that goes with this. So you can start on the board and show them as an example, like S, and then let's look at our notes. What symbol goes with at least? And then they'll be like, oh, the greater than or equal to symbol, and then three. And then write on the board, show them how it works. Then, then, it gets to the fun part, okay? Because now that you have that on the board, now you're gonna ask the class, huh, so I can give him at least three starbursts or her three starbursts. So does that mean, can I give them two starbursts? And then you can, now you're getting the thinking, like, and you have that discussion. Your goal is to have them understand this concept by the end of the day. And if you have 25 kids in your class or 30 kids in your class, and you are doing this activity so many times, and you keep asking these questions each time it gets to someone, then by the end of the lesson, hopefully to God, they will understand the difference between at, is at least, is at most, um, greater than, less than, equal to, you know, blah, 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 blah. So let's say we get to, you know, student. And you're doing this with every single student. You're having them go through the process. You are making everyone's participating because everyone's excited to see who's going to get the most starburst, who's going to get this, who's going to get that. But you make sure that they're writing it down on their whiteboard or their paper, whatever you have them using, like the inequality, before you go ahead and get the starburst. Because it might seem boring and redundant to some students, but actually doing this and going through the motions, it, it really will drive and sink home this concept. I cannot stress this enough. So like, let's say it lands on S is no more than one, okay? So that inequality, how that's written, is S is no more than one. But if it's no more than one, then then that means that I can give them one, but I can't give them the more than that. Aha! So S is less than or equal to one, all right? Now, this is where you can have some fun as a teacher. So then you'll be like, oh, so I can give this student one starburst. And then that's when they can be like, yeah. And then I can, as a teacher, be like, wait, but I can also give them no starburst, right? And then they're like, yeah! And that's what kids get like hype because they're like, oh snap, there's a possibility we're not getting starburst depending on this inequality. And it's just funny because it's like, you, you everyone wants starburst. And at the end of the day, well, just about everybody wants sorry, starburst. They don't want to be left out. So now it's forcing them to be like, crap. Now I need to understand what this inequality means because I want to know, dang, am I going to get, does she have the potential to not give me Starburst? So this is how, you're kind of like helping them try to get the concept down. Now, if you really want to be advanced with it, I did, let's say, let's go back to the example of it lands on S is no more than one, okay? So that's when I, as a teacher, get the scissors, and I cut the starburst in half. And then I say, huh, can I give this person half of a starburst if this is their inequality? You can kind of tell like which kids are really understanding like their number sense, because if you're gonna have that kid who's like, yeah, you can, because one half is less than one. And this sounds really like simple to us, but you have to go back to a kid's brain. Like sometimes they teach you about numbers, but they don't teach you like the logical sense behind it. So you expect and fractions are a very challenging concept for people to grasp. Yeah. So just have some fun with it. Like if you, it, and then even if you have one that says as simple as S is greater than two. 
give them two and a half. Like cut a Starburst in half and give it to them. And be like, can I do this? And have them confirm, explain. Have kids explain why you can or can't do this. Okay, if you want to have order, have them raise their hand to answer, whatever. But as long as they're engaged and thinking about it, oh child, you doing something. So I know I talk out really fast and I know I've said a lot, but basically the questioning through this activity is what can drive home if the concept sticks or not. Your questioning is vital to if they this con this activity works or not. Because you need to ask them, you need to like use those common misconceptions and try to ask them this like, okay, if it says S is at most two, then can I give them two? Can I give them one and a half? Can I give them two and a half? You need to ask these questions to make sure that they are really grasping this concept. Because I cannot stress enough, if they understand this concept, then this the concept is more important than just like filling out the test, okay? So if they understand this concept, I personally think it's not only going to get them through answering questions like this on a test, but it's also going to get them through life. Like if you go to the amusement park and it says, you got to be at least this tall to do this. You can't be up there like, oh, I'm below this height so therefore I can go. No. So it's really a good life skill for them to have. So make sure you go through every single person in the classroom and make sure you do that. Or if you want to, you know, you are short on time, you could just, you edit this, do it your own way. Maybe just choose certain people in the class to do it with. I don't know, whatever works for you in your classroom environment and the time that you have as a teacher. I'm saying all of this because you don't have to do exactly what I'm saying. You can take little parts of what I'm doing and just remix them <laughs> to your own. You know, as long as you know, they're learning, you're good. Got a little serious there but uh yeah let me know in the comments what you think let me know uh if you have any questions that you think i left out please let me know also um let me know if it works for you let me know if you remixed it let me know if you want to just i just i love to learn i love to help other people learn so i'm just like genuinely invested in your success as a teacher because i want your kids to be successful like weird I don't know, I have no personal investment in them, but yet, as humanity, as an educator at heart, I want everyone to be good, okay? So yeah, definitely subscribe, um, definitely comment, let me know what you think. If you like the video, psh, these are these are my thumbs, they're up. Yeah, so definitely give it a thumbs up if you like it. Um, if you didn't like it, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, so that was that, and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye! <laughs>